Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mythic Championship. It's gonna be the lower bracket, round one. I'm Dentro, joining me today is Josh once again. Hello, hello. Pico, uh, yeah, hello. This is gonna be a pretty interesting matchup as we have Disgusting Snow going up. Uh, disgusting going up against Snow's Exposure, I am sorry. Uh, this is a joke that went too far and we'll I'm not gonna go deeper on that. No, we definitely shouldn't. Um, this is the Mythic Championship. It's Heroes Lounge. We're doing the playoffs for the Amateur League. And these are the uh, top six teams remaining still in this uh, playoff. We have Disgusting versus Northern Exposure, as uh, Josh just said. Uh, on the other channel, we're gonna have Rip Hots Blizzcon 2K19 versus Xenon. That'll be starting at any moment, I'm sure. Uh, so go check them out as well. Uh, for this particular map chop, we have a map, but how did we get there, Josh? Uh, yeah, one second. We did went there by the virtue of banning and picking maps with Disgusting, choosing to ban out Garden and Sky Temple with uh, Nozen Exposure, taking care of Infernal Shrines and Volskaya. Ultra was on pick by Disgusting. Uh, it's actually pretty interesting. Infernal Shrines and Volskaya are two maps that a lot of teams would prefer to play on, and yet they are in the ban. Uh, they are out in the ban stage by Northern Exposure. Also, Sky Temple, the map that neither team has actually played on in this season, is banned as well. Not a lot of love for the sunny map of. Don't know what the region is called. I would say Shumeria, but not sure. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, uh, we had these two teams uh, never actually played uh, in the or uh, normal season of uh, season eleven here. Um, disgusting ended fourth uh, in total in the normal groups, uh, normal playoffs, as well as uh, Northern Exposure ending on the eighth spot. So they barely scraped into the playoffs here. And they uh, made it out of their groups, uh, winning on a head-to-head -head, uh, on three points. So uh, Northern Exposure, perhaps a bit of an underdog in this matchup. Uh, disgusting, uh, ending with uh, in second place in their group. I mean, you don't need to go to go ahead of the pack. You just need to barely scrape by the elimination point, and eventually you'll find yourself up against the wall and. Nozen Exposure are pretty good at fighting in that situation, as we have just noticed. Um, mm -hmm. Teams are looking to be ready. Or at least finally everyone showed up in the lobby. Because we had daylight savings. Um, <coughs> unfortunately, some places have them, some places don't, so I woke up having to prepare one hour less, which is pretty good considering that I don't prepare anyways, but yeah, it was a bit of a turbulent um, mm -hmm. thing that's happening, and thankfully we do have everyone remembering the swapped find for the playoff yeah i hope so um trying to boost josh as much as i can various uh, settings in uh, obs and so forth uh, i have now lowered myself and i've boosted him some more so hopefully that's gonna be better overall but uh See, technical I'm issues aside not, i'm boosted not just in game but in casting as well we hey. do have the draft starting up with nozen exposure taking the first pick and the first ban mm -hmm. we did have 11 deathwing bans versus disgusting and six deathwing bans versus nozen exposure the difference is pretty significant and i do think that the squishy lizard will be banned in this draft as well yeah he's just really difficult to deal with the only way to deal with him is raw damage and some heroes kits doesn't really allow allow you to be good against him and there's maybe too many heroes that can't be good against him let's be real but yeah he's just strong and uh, does a lot of damage and um, 
we'll see which team gets the privilege of banning him this time. He also counts somewhat as a global, which uh, while Ultrak Pass is not a map that's rich in uh, camps, it is still a pretty big map with a lot of potential for macro, macro play if you get those globals up. The Haka might be on the point of contention Falstaff as well, but I'm not sure he's that good with Bright heavily nerfed by the amount of camps that this map has. Ana is banned out as well as the Deathwing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Disgusting Action have banned Zertal 11 times this season, which is a pretty standout number. Yeah. As I want to check on the teams. I'm interested to see if they are gonna ban it now as well. Or if they are just going to ban something that their opponents actually play. <laughs> Can I go for the Zul ban? Zul is just really strong right now, so it makes a lot of sense. The Rexor ban is a bit curious, but perhaps they have uh, some sort of one trick or someone who's very proficient on the hero. Uh, here in Division 1 I would expect most of the picks to be available to, the, to these different teams. And uh, Northern Exposure uh, contemplating the first pick here. Will there be something like a Johanna, Li Ming? They're gonna go for an Amal fairly here. I mean, to be honest, as we have seen, Malfurion is really popular and basically the second strongest healer if we look at the pick rates. Because you first pick Ana and then you pick Malfurion. Ana is banned, so you pick the Malfurion, who is also the most picked hero of Disgusting. Yeah. So taking it away as well, which is crazy. Liming and Rega are gonna be the answers. Mm -hmm. Liming is the uh, second most picked hero for the team in blue. Alright. Um, Rega is just pretty solid all around, just not good enough to be that first pick, first ban material. Yeah, I'm a bit outshone perhaps, but still all around solid. He has the clans, he has big uh, heroics, and he can do camps. You gotta do camps. He also has your beauty in the new and improved Bloodlust. Mm. Northern Exposure choosing to pick up their comfort picks with Lunara and Diablo, both showing up 10 times in their play this season so far. Yep. Uh, lots of memes coming in from Twitch chat. Uh, something about Houdini and making people disappear and uh, giving people exposure. But you know, exposure kills you. You can't uh, live off of that alone. Um, so, fun to see some uh, support in the chat for the, these teams here. Uh, everything on the line. If you lose, you're out. If you win, you make it through to the next stage. Uh, playing uh, the other winner, I believe, from these uh, round one matches. Yeah, the Mythic Championship bra bracket stage is a bit different from all the others because it only features one division of players in the first place. So we do have an upper bracket with lower bracket, which mm -hmm. I think upper bracket and the rest of the matches will be broadcasted on channel number one. Meanwhile, we do have Sonya banned as well as Garrosh. Garrosh, notably a pretty solid counter to Diablo. Mm -hmm. okay. Not a Johanna yet, which is <clears throat> perhaps indicative of the higher level of play here. It's going to be an Anubarak together with a Dahaka. Uh, more. Um, Basically more skill shot dependent, uh, more judgment dependent. A Johanna can just waddle around and do whatever she wants, and it's really solid in the lower divisions. But here we see like the top top play that uh, uh, these teams are bringing out, and uh, some uh, more specific, specific and more finely tuned uh, tools being uh, used here. So Irel is the most picked offlaner for Nozen Exposure, and they're not going to switch off their preferred compositions as she finds her way alongside Sylvanas who has also been picked seven times so far. Mm -hmm. So Nozn Exposure pretty much picking their standard composition with not a lot of disruption coming in on that front from Disgusting as they preferred to ban more uh, meta heroes with Bethany and Zul in the first rotation. Mm -hmm. Sonya Band strikes me as a bit of an odd choice, but 
I don't know, the teams might have a bit more information than the quick glance at the launch page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Jimmy runs out the comp here for disgusting. Perhaps they took a page out of uh, Donald Fedora's book, who just ran Jimmy every game last uh, yesterday, and uh, actually took home the uh, Division Two and Three Cup there, uh, the Legendary Cup. Uh, Jimmy is really good. Uh, all runs all the way down. He's going to be the range assassin coming out for disgusting here. What do you think of these comps? Speaking of uh, Legendary Cup, we also do see the Lunara that was brought up by Gears and helps them move into the semi-final against Lucky Play. But the Lunara that they were playing was played in the offlane. I think this one will be played in the foreman. And I'm pretty interested to see how this will go up. Yeah. Uh, we do see some global pressure from the team on the left with the Haka while Nozn Exposure are packing up a bit more pushing power with the Sylvanas. I think it should be pretty interesting. <coughs> I do imagine that uh, Disgusting will be on the offensive, trying to dive in and disrupt the play of Nozn Exposure, and I'm really interested to see the evasion attempts that the red team will bring. Yeah, and speaking of the team in red, here they are. It's Northern Exposure uh, on the right. The rainy day Eric is playing the Sylvanas. Alias on the Lunara. Face Nobi is on Diablo, Break Raven on Malfurion, and Baby Houdini playing the Ural. On the other side of the barriers, we do have Lavecal on Liming, Rutek on Rega, Sartuas on the Haka, I'm sorry. Itrax on Raynor and Harpoon is gonna be playing a Nubarak. They are disgusting and let's see if their name corresponds to their place. <laughs> We're gonna see some disgusting combos. Well, perhaps uh, Li Ming was popping up yesterday. I'm sure she will be able to hear as well. An opening orb fires off the uh, starting salvo of this game. The chat is already saying something about legendary Harpa cocoons and I am interested to see if this is a legitimate hype or just trolling. Mm, they do have the Lemming themselves, so uh, opening it isn't gonna be as quick and easy, but uh, with two sources of a lot of instant damage in uh, both Lunara and uh, Sylvanas, I think they're gonna be uh, decent there, or at least uh, taking damage, lots of instances to open up that cocoon. So yeah, the teams are pretty much rotating early on. I've, I like the play from Disgusting, just trying to move up and try to catch their opponents on the rotation. I don't think they got anything, but there's a pretty nice heads up play. It's a gamble with not a lot of risk, but a lot of reward, reward if it goes off. Mm -hmm. As camps are spawning in and the teams are already gonna be moving for them with Mulfurion and the Sylvanas on the red side and Rega with Reina on the left. Yeah. Some training going on in these offlanes. Uh, Lunara actually got Liming to use the tap and there. An oh. Snowmi, who has been left alone in the mid lane. That's not gonna go good for Nozn Exposure as the first blood is spilled. Yeah, first blood. Uh, too uh, disgusting here. Good rotation into mid lane. Diablo still very soft. Doesn't have nearly enough souls to just walk away from that one. And uh, get some push into this uh, mid wall using their camp. And a slight XP lead coming their way. Getting the tower down, getting the other one down as well, I would imagine. And pretty much setting yourself up for a quick advantage in the early game. Setting up for a bigger push with the cavalry when that comes into play. Speaking of which, yeah, the cavalry will be spawning topside, and we do have an attempt from Nozn Exposure on Harpoon, which will end the Dig coming in as well from the Dahaka, looking for a drag, but Irel is too quick and jumping away here. So yeah, the team's trading blows, some are more successful than the others, but we do have our Prisons spawning in soon, as well as the camps, as we do see Intrax and Rutek already waiting for it to spawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the bonus of having a little bit of extra DPS on your team. It took them, what, 8 seconds quicker to uh, do the camp, and now Sylvanas has to go up there alone. 
But uh, yeah, it'll be a tiny edge on the map. Uh, and for I like the team in how blue. much it actually snowballed for the blue team. You do take the camp a bit quicker, but you use that timing advantage to rotate mid lane, kill the Di Diablo, and get yourself in the lead. Mm -hmm. And now you get the second objective even more quicker because the enemy team not only has to take the camp longer, they have to wait for it to respawn. And that does allow Disgusting to basically stop capping the objective. Mm -hmm. Already 20 seconds. Of engage onto the Jimmy here. Nice root follow up. They go for him. Gregor with the healing and counter engage. Goes for Sylvanas, gets away. Diablo now very weak here in the front line. Jimmy is dealing the damage he can. Gregor tries to get the kill, but the bite isn't enough. And big scrap here with Diablo quite low. Uses the tap though. Uh, has Devil's Dew and can re engage. Coming in here. The baby Houdini on the URL. Quite weak. Nice drag and another kill for the team in blue. Uh, disgusting here with the early pressure. And it is working very well for them. So prison was reset during the fight, but taking the URL allows them to just continue capping and to get the first wave of cavalry. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, the first wave of cavalry is not that strong. Usually it is the second one that team takes that breaks the game wide open. But I've also have been looking at lower uh, divisions and seeing the differences between lower divisions and high divisions have been pretty interesting so far. And let's see what this switch to the highest level of play in launch yeah. drop will bring. Pushing in mid here with the towers already down. They're not going for Diablo with the stun follow up. Uh, no, might be punished for this though. Has to walk away up top. Uh, Sylvanas is chasing. Uh, does not quite have the damage though. Jimmy is still out attacking away. Lunara falls to Liming in bot lane. Nicely done there by Lavacal. Uh, and the fall on up in mid lane. And the mid seems to be falling here. Last exposure just does not seem to be holding up as well as they should. Honestly, Ooh, with here. Getting caught on the rotation as well. Absolutely disgusting so far from the left team as they continue putting down the pressure and basically taking two thoughts with the first objective. Yeah, that's a really good result. Uh, they have level 10, four kills to their name, and looking at a boss, a bit ambitious perhaps, but uh, can maybe do it there. Jimmy isn't gonna join. And the other team is just immediately going for the counter boss call. Oh, I like the idea from Nozn Exposure, seeing that their enemies are not on the map, basically just deciding to trade away the boss for a boss instead of going to fight yeah. them, since they are lower on the level and will probably lose as their enemies are taking movements, which are a cool. The Banshee, we do also have Isolation, Ancestral Healing and Wave, of course. The Hacker is gonna scout it out, but no action done. Oh, man, actually fall for this. Uh, uses the Essence, uses the Dig. Another drag here, actually did sell some damage onto Baby Houdini, but now there's also Vanas here if they want to push. They I may think need the to defend them. lost all. more HP than the Dihaka here, but also Nozn Exposure can't really push there because they have to defend the. Oh, he interrupts all their backs with one heroic air. That's pretty damn good. It gives a lot of time for bottom lane, and he will probably have it back for the next fight regardless. So uh, I would say a really good play from the Haka, uh, delaying the team. Quite a lot opening a wing con in the later stages uh, with this team pushing both on. Level 10 and level 11 come out for Nozen Exposure as they jump down bot, which the enemy team recognizes and just moves back. You don't need to get any more advantage, you are already in the lead uh, mm -hmm. pretty solidly. You can just force your own fight later on. In terms of ultimates on the right side, we do have Creeping Vine, Bailing Arrow, Apocalypse, uh, Bubble from Irel, and a Twilight Dream for the Mokiri. Mm -hmm. I'm slightly surprised by the Thornwood Vines out of Lunora. I would have expected a leap perhaps, but uh, maybe maybe they feel they need the poke. I'm unsure about this choice, but I'm sure Twitch chats will have opinions as it always does. Uh, Twitch chat is always, always right, you know. Uh, the hacker joining in, and it's gonna be a full team fight. Drag misses, takes him a lot of damage for trouble, gets Apoch in here, Anub with the counter engage, Kukun in the backline, 
Malfi is now stuck. They open it up very quickly. Houdini. Uh, sowing some chaos. Uses the heroic. Uh, still have Wailing Arrow. And she jumps away. Wailing goes in there. They go for that nub. Flip over. And Twilight Dream. Nub goes down. First blood for the team in red. Gets one. Uh, Ancestral is used as well. And they are now moving in on the aggressive side here. Trying to pick up the uh, channel. Nozn Exposure putting themselves on the board. Taking their first kill. And... Yeah, pretty much redeeming themselves for the first eight minutes of the game, which have been going pretty poorly for them. Now, Israel is gonna stay in the objective to prevent the minions to stop the cap. Stop the cap, and the rest of the team is basically free to do some damage mid lane, de push top lane, while we do see disgusting respawn and go back. Mm. The captures are stopped with a score of 18 seconds to 15 seconds. Yeah, but there's no level 13 now for uh, Northern Exposure, so they may still have to give up this despite uh, uh, ostensibly winning that team fight. But yeah, uh, cooldown timers are not long enough. Um, we get the drag here. We do have the engages from both teams coming up. The cocoon is now just on the Lunara, which does break a lot of time does add a lot of time to breaking in because Lunara does that poison damage and it is enough for this Dustin to hold for just enough so the cavalry will get spawned which they recognize and just move back hoping to get more advantage on the objective mm -hmm. instead of trying to all try to fight yeah second uh, cavalry charge coming in here uh, positioning up in mid the Haka still on top he used the burrow to get there um, Irel looking for Liming, can't really make anything happen though with the blink counter and pushes them slightly out of the lane. So yeah, the main focus here is the mid lane where the keep wall is being a pretty nice target for push, but we also see Nozn Exposure do some defensive effort on that front. Where we don't see the defensive effort show up is the top lane, where the Haka is getting... Oh, Lunara, you're so far away! Not like this! The rotations down to this bottom lane have been a bit sketchy coming out of Northern Exposure, and this is the second time now their team has uh, died to being cut off by an Anubarak and uh, friends. I need to be a bit more careful. There is a bit of a communication issue between the players and the red team, but this gank on the Haka might actually bring some success as the Haka is killed mid burrow. Mm -hmm. Lucky for him, but his team gets access to the core, killing out bottom keep and doing some damage on the mid lane one. So I'd say it's a win nonetheless. Yeah, now the core on Ultrak is a bit weird because in it does heal to full HP and it also has bonus resistance for every keep alive. So usually you don't see core being finished from just one keep. No, it's basically impossible to end early on Ultrak. So if you want to play a late game comp, then that might be a reason to pick this map. Uh, Irel sees this uh, boss attempt going on top, but can't really do anything about it. Uh, the whole team seems to be moving bottom to take this boss. I wonder if they will be able to do this on time. It's now race against the clock. Uh, either you have to defend against this team or you kind of lose your keep for this. So we'll see how much this play pays off for Northern Exposure. Trying to make a counterplay happen on the map right now. It's going to be basically a base race here. Can you take the boss and defend your keep before it falls? And will this boss actually threaten core in the end? My favorite part about that play from Nozm Exposure is while they are taking the risk, they also do send the Irel to be push mid lane, which would be a bit of a problem if they don't do it. But the keep does fall and the boss did not even lose any HP, so there is a potential core play if they win this fight. The question is, will they? Level 16 is here. Uh, the Haka takes a lot of damage there under the core, your selection misses. Irel 3 man stun hit in the back line. Goes for Jimmy, Epoch goes out as well, boss is on about half health. And smacking the core here, the Haka in trouble. He's not gonna make it out and the core lives. And the other point of 
the core region into full HP is that you can't just take it down in several swings. When you go for it, you go for it and it should be a 100 to 0 because otherwise it just regens to full HP as it starts doing now. Basically mm -hmm. negating all of the effort that push me on the core proper. Uh -huh. Nice hold from Nozdic Exposure getting a core. Oh, very aggressive move here, only Ming. Silvana's looking for her. Can't con confirm a kill though, but uh, good play here from the Northern Exposure. They need some pickups, they need to make some plays, and uh, I like the attempt there. I mean, yeah, you're behind, but the towns are equal, and you still do have some of them ultimates, which your opponents kind of lack at the moment. So, why not go for the play? Why not just try and take a kill for yourself? So, you don't hurt. And another engage on the Haka is there, and Ubarak joining in. The Haka is already dead, so the Cocoon is on Mofirin and he's breaking very quickly. As we do see Nozin Exposure hold once again, and once again they kill the Haka, who has been dying a bit oh. too much. That was scary. Liming almost picking off Irel there. If that was, had been a squishy target, then they might like actually have fallen to the orb. Um, yeah, good team fight once again. They're able to pick off the Dahaka here. Uh, Does the winner go the spoils? Nozzle Exposure will take the cavalry, but we do see that the wave is starting to push in on the core. They usually won't get it on their own, but every wave on the core does mean that the enemy team can jump on it as well out of nowhere and mm -hmm. basically ruin your entire games that you have been playing. So they are annoying and you have to deal with it. Otherwise, it's just gonna take your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no exposure now on the four man here in the middle. They have a real bottom, uh, uh, Lunara, excuse me. Uh, Diablo finding out a small bug here, hiding in the bushes and uh, trying to make a push happen here in the mid lane. Well, the push will be a very short lift as the unit is dismantled pretty quickly. But the push is regaining uh, strength on the bot lane where the fort is living on no HP and Nozzle Exposure are preparing some kind of ambush it looks like, which is not gonna be that successful considering the fact that everyone of this casting is in the top lane or the mid lane. Yeah, that's a bit of a vision play from both teams actually. Neither of them uh, showed until they really saw the other and... Uh... I like the caution, I suppose, uh, but now Northern Exposure are fighting into a very uh, rapidly approaching level 20 here from this coasting. The Haka is on the flank, he burrowed in from mid lane. Uh, they don't have 20 quite yet, but uh, it's basically a done deal, and there it is. And that was a pretty nice push from the side of Northern Exposure. Basically, uh, we in the guessing game, I would say, because I'd rather take the fort and try to pressure a keep down than just fight for one of the lanes. Mm -hmm. And retreating before the enemy gets level 20. The downside is that now you have to defend versus level 20 and try to hold off basically while you get one of your own. So yeah, the push now begins and you in the mid lane now. Oh, Diablo goes for a noob with the stun follow up. Gets cleansed, uses the top of to burrow away. Uh, Way of Force pushes the front line forward. A lot of damage going in here. Irel uses the heroic. Gets stunned once more. Uh, have a lot of heroic. Diablo's very weak here. Mouth now very exposed. Arrow over top. Will they get one? I mean, it's really low. They get a noob instead. Could actually get several, and Nozzle Exposure are looking to continue the fight, which seems pretty interesting. But he is actually quite correct in my opinion, because most ultimates were blown away. And uh, we do see Nozzle Exposure just gain level 20, which does mean that they do have some extra talents to play off. Their opponents might have blown in the fight. <laughs> we do see that the Prisons will spawn in once again, but this custom want none of it and are just going for the boss. It is getting quite late by Hirsu's storm standards, 18 minutes in, and the boss should be quite strong for the team to be able to finish with it. 
The question is, are they able to win the ensuing fight or is it just a maneuver decided to... Yeah, I think this ends up being a maneuver. Um, you, you get to decide what to do based on when you see your opponents, right? If the boss is uncontested top, then you just uh, prepare to fight them and like delay. And in this case, they are going to go for the second boss and probably eventually go for the uh, um, the uh, prison camp. I'm actually interested to see uh, the Haka just be push the mid lane before moving in for the prison, which does mean that they lose a bit of time, which is not much, but at this level, the margins of error that you can give away are really small. Mm -hmm. It also gives a more vi additional vision in the lane. Um, so it's a trade-off, obviously. They opt for extra vision because they know they have the time because of the boss. Engage here onto Rhaegar. Gets blown up by great engage from Diablo. Uh, Sylvanas in the Fisher backline. Yeah, and they... Should be really important, but we do see the Haka just go oh, the Duke. rainy day, Eric. The Sylvanas surviving, I don't know how. The Cocoon is broken and the Haka is down. Not the exposure taken at 2 4 0, but they have to defend their core or it will just die to the boss. Pretty spooky stuff. Another engage once again now on Li Ming. And the Nubrak, it looks like Diablo is traded for the Liming in the end of that. Yeah, Jimmy coming in there and just... Oh, is the boss actually gonna end? It might. Jimmy's gonna go for the core, trying to get the end here. Is it gonna be enough? I didn't see that coming, but... <laughs> it, the game is over. The insane lane push was too much for the defenders to deal with, and the core actually falls here. I mean, you hate to say it, it was a risk that Nozn Exposure have taken, deciding to stay for some extra kills and getting them, but unfortunately, the core was a bit too low to handle the pressure exerted by the boss and the Rainer. Game 1 goes to Disgusting, and you hate to lose like that, but the signs were there, and yeah, Disgusting winning in the fashion which they were named after. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, God, that's a frustrating way to lose, right? You actually win the fight, but you lose like one too many players in the end, and your core is so much under pressure because of the early game weaknesses that you actually can't make it. And ah, oh, that I feel for Northern Exposure, they had really good late game fights. The Jukes on Sylvanas against uh, the Haka were insane. Like, that mini play in that team fight is, like, why these teams are in this division. And they it proves that they are really good individually. But also, like, the macro moves across the map that we saw here is just beyond anything that's uh, shown up in the lower divisions for sure. Meanwhile, we do have our map choice for the second game, as Nost Exposure opted to go for first pick and Disgusting had picked up Tomb of the Spider Queen. Another map with the boss, another map with a lot of fighting involved, but the matter of how exactly those things are spaced in the flow of the game on the map is a lot different. Let's see how this one will go. Yep, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a spicy one if disgusting are able to do if disgusting are able to have the same kind of effect on the early objectives like the web weavers and the the cavalry are really similar in how they play on the map when you actually get them if they're able to do something similar with that first web weaver pay and that can be uh, very dramatic for the rest of the game on Tomb of Spider Queen in particular. So I hope that for Northern Exposure's sake that they can, uh, I don't know, get themselves some better early game basically, that they don't need uh, so much scaling, they don't need their level 10s for example, that they can match the map uh, on their base kit. So uh, the question is, 
uh, one of the other things that I want to put out is uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen is one of the two maps in my opinion which do feature a lot of counting and sometimes teams do make mistakes with that which could make for some embarrassing defeats but we also can see a lot of potential to just uh, read the place of your opponents seeing where the people are how many champs they have and deducing if the enemy is indeed paying on the other mm. alpha or if they aren't able to get the web weaver wave and you can just fight it out pretty nice outplay potential in the brain part of the game here i would say yeah um to answer the question in chat uh, these round one games are best of threes the finals is the best of five. I am uncertain if the upper or lower bracket finals are also best of fives, but I don't believe so. I'm trying to find that out right now, and hopefully we'll have an answer. So um, that's what it uh, stands right now. So uh, disgusting is one map away from winning, and no expo Northern Exposure needs uh, two more here to stay in this playoffs. The Mythic Championship, lower bracket round one here. Coming on in on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Up against the wall, just as he wants to be. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if their uh, frosty, the frosty exterior wall. can uh, keep up with their. Uh, if they, if they can keep cool, let's say that. Ooh, I went for an easier. Nice I went for an easier pun. I was going somewhere really long-winded, but I decided against it. All right, it's gonna be two minutes by the queen. Disgusting versus uh, northern exposure. So yeah, let's see if the frosty facade that northern exposure continue to keep will melt due to the pressures of the game and the just the fire of the entire situation. It is pretty stressful at this point. Just one map away and you're eliminated. But we did see that. Northern Exposure were 8th in the regular division. Northern mm -hmm. Exposure just barely scraped the tie breaks to get there to the playoff day. So they are a team that can pretty much play under pressure. And I think this is the one uh, quality that you really need to see in mm -hmm. the situation. Situations like these, Anna is gonna be banned out as well as uh, Deathwing. Yeah. Not a lot of difference from game number one, even though the maps are really different, in my opinion. Tomb of Spider Queen has been described as a brawl in the toilet when it was first announced, which <laughs> does mean that it is more of a stylistic choice for disgusting than Nozn Exposure. But then again, Nozn Exposure lost on a really frosty map in Ultra Pass, so. Mm. Let's see how this will turn out. So flavor of loss then, if Northern Exposure loses on Alterac. Unfortunate. Uh, Sewell gets removed uh, together with Johanna, two of the best wave clear tanks. Uh, so you then have Blaze remaining if you want to wave clear on that slot, I would say. You can, uh, I guess you can play like Stitches, but I haven't seen him in a long while. Although that would be funny because uh, I always like me a good hook. But I don't think we're gonna see him here. Another first pick, Malfurion, coming out of uh, Northern Exposure. I mean, Malfurion is pretty solid. He's still good, and he's still the first pick of uh, Disgusting in many situations, as we know. So taking him away is still really solid. I don't think that Northern Exposure will switch a lot in their comp, as they have been running basically a lot of times, because. Most of those heroes did show in their top 5 most played, and Malfurion is the obvious choice when Ana is banned. Mm -hmm. Junkrat with Rex are showing up for Disgusting. Junkrat, I think Junkrat was the one banned last time, or was it Rexa? Uh, Rexa was banned in the second rotation, I believe. No, he was banned first rotation even. Um, so yeah, a lot of vision control, I would say, for... Uh... Disgusting, and then a very like solid, scary team fighting lineup coming out as the start from Northern Exposure. Keeping up with the Frost team by picking up the Chainer this time around, seeing the Lunara band 
out, which understandable, honestly. As she did not show up in the first rotation like the last time around. Diablo is here, which would imply a Garish ban once again, seeing that he is a really solid counter pick. But yeah, we are just continuing to draft the drafting draft, and the teams are showing more and more of their strategies, which is looking pretty nice. Junkrat and Rexa do provide a lot of pressure on the lanes, do provide a lot of long range poke to deal with uh, pesky people trying to pay in on the altars. EDC mm -hmm. and Anduin are just a really solid combo with the ETC's engage potential and the Anduin's potential to yeet enemy, to yeet your friends away if they get into dangers. Yeah, as long as the Anduin isn't being engaged upon, he can fix almost any problem your team has. So, uh, really strong in that sense. It's gonna be a Leoric together with the Hanzo. Really like standard solid lineup here from Northern Exposure. Uh, great offliner. Uh, with the recent, somewhat recent changes to Rexar, I don't know if the bear can actually out-sustain Leoric anymore. And if you just bash on him long enough that uh, you run Rexar out of mana. But I would expect some sort of rotation to come down to uh, help out both sides, actually. Yeah, it is a pretty common early game play to send someone down bot to tank the camp, which in as we get higher and higher in skill level, we do see a lot more brawls in the bot lane by the people running down to just collect the camp. A lot more attempts to catch someone out on the camp proper and so it does mean that the early game is looking to be pretty interesting. Sylvanas is being picked up by Itrax to close out this draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two pretty solid lineups. You have uh, a lot of young Claire there on the junk route to get with Sylv. The ETC and Anduin doesn't really supply that much. And on the other side, just good pokes and vision control. You have a big one with combo engage with the Diablo, Malf, and Jaina. And you can probably have hit some pretty spicy entombs. Although, then again, basically everyone is safe from an entomb except maybe Rexar. Uh, I guess Andon is not very happy to get the entombed either, but um, he doesn't have that many targets. Uh, I'm curious to see how well uh, Baby Houdini there can uh, use them. There might also, also be a March of the Black King, but. That doesn't seem good into this team. There's like a melee and a half. Um, so it doesn't have that much value, I would say. I actually like the draft that most exposure have provided here with a lot of AoE lockdown potential, which can quickly turn into just a lockdown proper where you stun lock the, team, the enemy team, the entirety of it for eternity. And Tones of Spider Queen is a map that has a lot of tight corridors where this potential can be realized. I also really like the Intomb plus Diablo combo with the Intomb basically becoming a lot of walls around the person Diablo is trying to engage. So when you engage, the person is not moving too far for the other AoEs to hit and it is basically guaranteed that you're gonna hit a wall somewhere. Yeah, um, with the um, like the, the closeness of the lanes as well, Diablo, if he chooses to go um, the Soul Talents, which I assume they will, um, just have insane lane sustain. And this uh, pause has been already fixed, so um, we're gonna see the teams. Uh, 3-3 three three is already called as we are waiting for the referee to unpause uh, or something. Can I unpause? I think we, we can unpause as well, but... Yeah. Anyways, speaking of Nozn Exposure, here they are in the red. We do have Rainy Day Eric playing Jaina, Baby Houdini on Leoric, Break Raven running the Mulfurion, Face Snowby on Diablo, and Elias on Hanzo. He's gonna be poking down the opposition. Mm -hmm. And in the blue on the left, it's uh, their opponents. This disgusting. 
Uh, Sartuas is on the Rexar. Itrax playing Sylvanas Rutek on Anduin. Uh, Lavakal playing the Junkrat and Harpoon is on ETC. Game number one has been proven pretty spicy and really close in the ending. So there is no reason to believe that this one will not end Ooh. the same. And this early engage by the Diablo resulting in a quick, quick kill on Nisha is gonna be just what Nozna Exposure want. Setting yeah, up actually... Baby Houdini for a uh, for some amount of advantage in the offlane and in getting some experience to start yourself off. Mm -hmm. That's fine here by Snowy. Yeah, having bear control, uh, funny as the term might be, uh, is actually kind of important. Um, Misha gives a lot of vision, it has a lot of battlefield control, and a well-placed one can eat a lot of skill shots away. So you can also see here in the bottom that uh, Bevudini is kind of struggling right now. And as uh, mentioned, a bit of a rotation coming in from the Hanzo. Trying to get some early target practice stacks, I would imagine. Unfortunately, he misses and Raxa actually rotates to mid lane, which is interesting to me. Not often do you see uh, offlaners rotating up to their form and in lower divisions. And I guess it's just a pretty nice strategy to make your mid lane lose a bit less while your Sylvanas and. Um, Things that's uh, an Anduin moving up to clear out a really early Urusa camp. Oh, double stun here coming in onto the Hanzo, but no real auto attack follow up there. Uh, forces the jump though, and a big Bruiser push in the middle with Sylvanas and Anduin just taking camps all the time apparently. Junkrat is fixing all their macro, and the three man with the Jaina here is kind of struggling to. Uh, clean out what he has been pushing in here. I really like th this play from Disgusting, just conceding the lanes almost entirely, leaving only a chunk rat and then DC to clear out the top two lanes while Raxa is coming in, the in lane. here on the flank. Oh, rip away. Uh, didn't get quite the stun he wanted there on the ETC, I believe, but. Um, Misha also escaping with the sliver of health, but yeah, like you say, um, how they've been drafting this and playing this so far is pretty cool actually. Um, you just have a hero that can deal so much damage to all the lanes that you kind of can do whatever you want with the rest of your team, right? And in addition to that, you have safety. I'm doing the uh, hero with the follow up on the Hanzo jump, so once again, uh, probably barely has it back from the gank attempt there in the bottom lane. And just more and more uh, gems being paid in here. They have four exactly on the Sylvanas Both there. already have enough to pay in, which does make the games even more interesting. The big difference here is we do see that Disgusting have already paid almost all of gems that they need to get in, which does make it significantly harder for Nozna Exposure to disrupt. And Hansu Elias just actually ops. misses he trucks paying in to get in the first wave of web weavers. Yeah, I just basically must have not seen that Sylvanas was there and trying to pay, totally focused on the stacking. Um, there could be the option that they want to give them the pay and like they have this camp to push it now, but even then it seems a bit unnecessary to just give it away. Big root here on ETC. On Harpoon, which will get saved by the Anduin, and this is why we do see Anduin showing up with his save potential. I think it's even bigger than the save potential from the Rega. And mm -hmm. in lower divisions, Anduin is the second best healer after Ana. So, yeah. Some pretty nice play coming out from the team's first wave of web weavers. He's actually getting pushed out really quickly by Nozn Exposure, but the damage is done as we do see all the walls being killed. And Leoric taking a lot of damage here in bot lane from the Rexar uh, with 31 gems and just being pushed in here is kind of difficult for him to step up and get them paid in. Uh, Another exposure, looking for the bottom lane. Maybe want to find a Rexar. Uh, I think you get the stacks if you hit, hit Misha, don't you? So I'm a bit surprised uh, the Hansa hasn't been aiming for the bear instead. Uh, 
if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I only tried to play him for like a week and I didn't win at all. So, you know, no big deal. Uh, Baby Houdini here, kind of a precarious situation. Three man rotation to both and the four to will fall here. Uh, good push in from Disgusting. Diablo gets the flip oh, and the wow. Brute and Chunkrat barely walks away but can't make it happen. Uh, ETC misses the slide here, tries to get away. And that's actually first blood after five and a half minutes. Uh, Northern Exposure gets the first kill uh, of a full hero in any case. And then probably a bear extra for good measure. Uh, Misha down. And it's going to be a I pain mean, with a camp If we're to being defend. technical here, first blood was committed 15 seconds in as Diablo. Uh, the bear doesn't count. We all know that. No one likes Misha anyway. So Access what you're saying hero. is that you're for animal abuse. That's pretty disgusting, my friend. And they are the ones back in the mission. I mean, then it's all well and good, right? Uh, in any case, we have a push in here with the Brewster camp perfectly timed to defend it. Nicely done there by Disgusting. And Northern Exposure looking for the level 10s. They have the three man here on top. Uh, getting that XP. Hanso's off poking people with the arrows. Going for the Q build. And... It's, it might be an engaged here. We have Water Elemental, not Ring of Frost, so no big Wombo combo into an Anduin. I can understand that uh, uh, choice. And I like the idea of Light Bomb who is much with just make setting up for that God Wombo combo Omega Lul Mosh that much better. Because you get the initial stun, which does set you up to pretty much choose your position a bit, make it a little bit better, and makes it so you're Opponents can't even move out while the channel. Yeah, but how, oh, big in Tomb Raider 3 man. Uh, Light Bomb is countered and ETC slides forward to tank the arrow there. So basically, nothing happens. And three hero, four heroics are spent for two. And actually, four heroics for two, excuse me, there. So slight advantage here. ETC gets, still gets in trouble. Mosh Pit interrupted by the Twilight Dream. And big. Uh, Big rip tire here, Jaina donates to the Rexor follow up. So one down here and, and disgusting, looking for more. Goes for the Leoric, doesn't have Wraith Walk available, and with Sylvana straight, you're gonna go for mid forward. And ETC just basically breaks the game open as we do see disgusting, gets the fight that Nozna Exposure really wanted to fight and get. And you also get the objective, you also get this fort in the mid lane down to 200 HP, which does mean that it will die from a breeze. Yeah. Mid fort is just gonna die regardless, there's no real point in defending it. Uh, they do put the bruisers there in the middle, and Disgusting follows this up with a uh, bottom siege giant camp picked up. 10 to, 10 to 11, uh, 12 to 11, excuse me. Uh, they go for the bear again. Diablo gets slid, and Blizzard kind of whiffs here. Nice body works on Diablo though, tries to get him out, and he's probably just gonna fall here. Good pressure here on the main tank, he cracks his souls, and he's gonna be back in the fight very soon. And he's to get another fight. I don't know, they do keep getting those fights while Nozn Exposure are trying their hardest and just. Falling shot in the end, it's actually kind of sad in a way. Trying so hard and not getting there in the end. We do have the engage of Baby Fury, but he just is away as the web viewer continues to push in on the keep walls. We already another in tomb finds the Rexor. Big arrow there on the back line, grip away though. Uh, ETC though becomes the counter target as he tries to peel for his team and they get the kill here. Uh, defending their bottom keep. Uh, Diablo quite weak here, but so much healing coming into him, and he's still gonna fall. A lot of damage here from Sylvanas. Uh, Twilight Dream to peel for his team, it might not be enough. Rake Raven on Malf gonna fall here, and they're looking for more. Misha goes in onto the Leoric, uh, lots of gems from him. Uh, can't really make it happen though, and the Water Elemental uh, poking away the bear, leaving on about 50 hit points. No eminent abuse this time, just, you know, slight abuse. A little bit, it's fine. Mm, yeah, sure. Um, some really nice heads up plays from the side of Disgusting. I particularly like the use of Anduin straight to basically negate the Dragon Arrow as he 
as it just hit the Raxa, who was the only person in tomb, I believe. And to the victor goes the spoils. We do see that these Gustin are on that boss and are going to take it no matter what happens. The throw pit is favoring the blue team today. Mm -hmm. uh, Edith is cutting out the bottom pay, so there's no sneaky stuff happening. Uh, Lyric has enough to pay for on his own. So anytime he gets the pay, that would be pretty good for them, but I don't think they're ever going to let him. Uh, boss is going to be pushing here in top lane. Uh, they have a level lead. And Leoric just right walks away. He doesn't like whatever this is going to be happening here. And uh, the solo lane thing, senses were tingling. Uh, big push here. Very aggressive move with the Sylvanas straight in on mid keep. Uh, they use the boars to kind of keep them all away. Ryan Jaina gets cleansed there. Uh, they kill off the bear. And that's an ult for cleanse, which is pretty good. And Leoric here walking in really aggressively. Maybe looking for him to don't really hit it here as Junkrat jukes it away. A good attempt though, but it will maybe cost them top keep. Close, but no cigar, and we do see Nozlik's exposure trying to risk their structures once again for the play. This time they will save the keep though, which is gonna be pretty nice, but <coughs> once again, less than a thousand HP, not much you can do when your opponent will actually try and set up some kind of push deal with it. Yeah. Red um, team finally gets the turning in and do get their second wave of bad beavers, I believe. This one will mainly be used to de-push the lanes, unfortunately, as they are a bit, a bit too much behind on this map. Yeah. Um, their gem total right now is not enough to pay a third time in a row here, so and they'll need to try to pick up as much gems as they can, as well as their level 16 to make a fight happen. Uh, bumping heads here, or ETC and Diablo, uh, finding each other out. And these camps, man, they're just, they're just kind of ruining the webweavers, honestly. Uh, mid didn't do very much, bottom did nothing, and top didn't do anything either. So, yeah, it's like you said, this is a deep push pain here, and it doesn't really get them very much. I mean, nothing is still better than the detrimental value you get from your enemies taking hold of the objective. Also, I think that deep pushing the lanes is the thing that Nozn Exposure really want because it provides them with some space on the map. It gives them some time that they need to get to their power spikes, to get to their level 20, which could be particularly savage with Buried Alive coming into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still, though, it's never been hitting Anduin, so as long as you don't hit him, you can still save whoever's inside there. And ETC has been going pretty ham trying to peel away from the Entomb. Last time he lost his life for it, but um, it may be that like the Entomb is the just distraction opening gambit, and then you have to take it from there. Um, they're gonna have 16, they have the middle bruiser to deep push mid, but top is guaranteed to fall, I would say, and uh, bottom might not fare much better. Uh, no exposure here, under a lot, a lot of pressure in this do or die situation. If they lose this game, they're out of the playoffs, and Disgusting will take this 2-1. Uh, Re Rex are here, very exposed, Leoric is gonna go get on him, but the team is there to help. And ETC now flanking the whole team, and um, appeals for the backline, Leoric's walking away. Uh, probably in trouble now, no slide though, but with the Rexor. Oh, arrow misses. Mm. Ipok as well. Tried, trusted his teammate with the follow up. And Jaina falls here. And that should be the end for Disgusting. As I do think that they will be to mount up a core attempt with three web weavers with three level advantage and with three people on the side of Nozn Exposure dead. Yeah. Uh... Valiant effort here from Nord Exposure, but uh, Disgusting proves too strong for them. Uh, with all the web weavers there on the screen, Leoric trying to clear away. Uh, ETC peeling from Hanso and Chorus falling. It's gonna be GG with Disgusting winning 2 to 0 against Northern Exposure. Ta -ta -ta -ta. So, yeah, we 
did see that these guys didn't have named themselves like that for a reason. That was a pretty solid showing in the first round of Mythic Championship as they suddenly do move on and unfortunately the uh, scraping of the lower uh, bracket of Nozzle Exposure, their attempts of being just high enough to pass Unfortunately, the road stops here, but they still got there and they still tried to get as much as they could. Unfortunately, it just did not work out this time around. Yep. Uh, disgusting. We'll move on to play uh, the winner of Rip Hots Blizzcon 2K19 and Xenon uh, that's being played at this very moment on Channel 1. Um, I'm uncertain about the score there, but uh, we're going to be sending you there regardless because all the action remaining on this uh, playoff day for the Mythic, Mythic Championship is going to be happening on Heroes Launch Channel 1. Uh, we're going to be raiding uh, there very shortly. So uh, congrats to Disgusting and good luck to them in the remainder of the games. And good luck to all the teams still playing. Um, the and very next but game coming up have fun because fun is the reason why we are here and as i say goodbye to you the last time this season as it is my last cast yeah have fun because it is mandatory after all see you next season <laughs> all right so uh, uh twitch chat has informed us that xenon is the winner of that matchup so it's going to be disgusting versus xenon uh in a little while uh, coming up next uh, is going to be Hype Pew Pew versus Hoi Poloki, uh, casted by Heroes at School and Sidonion. That's the upper bracket finals. That's the two winning teams out of the group. So uh, it's going to be a good one for sure. And the winner of that match will go on into the grand finals. And uh, then there's going to be a scrap in the lower bracket to see who will join them. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you had a good time. Uh, I've been Dentro. This has been Josh. And uh, have a good weekend. Bye-bye.